very, very happy to. Okay, so maybe I can uh, <laughs> start again. Okay, yeah. thank you for the uh, welcome message. And uh, let me, uh, let's start. So today I'm going to uh, talk about uh, my uh, works, uh, some of my works during my PhD, and uh, I will uh, mainly focusing on the uh, compiler optimizations. Uh, that is, like, uh, how can we advance systematically advance state of the art from the compilers uh, by enabling deep optimizations at using uh, a key idea called the the high level optimization. So. Going back like 100 years ago, like a group of physicists invented uh, this uh, set of theory called the quantum mechanics. And uh, this quantum mechanics theory triggers of our first quantum revolution. Um, then after like uh, around 50 years, uh, an unexpected outcome of this uh, first quantum re revolution is actually the, the transistor. And uh, the transistor is then like a continue to be improved and then uh, turning to MOSFET and uh, then like a uh, scale up to like integrated uh, circuits, like constituting the foundations of our today's uh, classical computer systems. And uh, then uh, like uh, after another, uh, like 20 years, uh, going back to uh, 1980s, another group of physicists said, okay, uh, your classical computer is good, it's powerful, but uh, your device is st still not fully utilizing uh, the power of our quantum mechanics. Uh, it is still doing classical computing. Maybe you can like, try to do computation directly like under the law of uh, quantum mechanics. Uh, this is uh, called the, the second uh, quantum revolution. Okay, after the, uh, the, the idea of trying to like uh, doing computation using quantum mechanics was proposed, uh, people start to, uh, uh, or as not as developing a quantum computer, people start to thinking about, okay, uh, what kind of equations uh, we should run on a quantum computer and what kind of technology we should, we can use to develop a physical quantum computer. And a great uh, milestone in the development of quantum computer is like in 1994, Peter Shaw proposed his fa very famous uh, Shaw's algorithm saying that, okay, we can factor a very large integer using a quantum computer. And this actually uh, triggers a lot of uh, investment to get into this area because uh, this like uh, integer factoring algorithm can solve, uh, can, uh, can potentially attack uh, today's uh, cryptography uh, systems and the people care about uh, cryptography. Uh, then after another over 20 years, uh, back in uh, uh, 2019, uh, Google uh, announced that, okay, they uh, achieved uh, a, a quantum supremacy experiment uh, on their like uh, superconducting device uh, for the first time demonstrating something that uh, that is very hard on a classical supercomputer, but uh, doable. Uh, in a, like a reasonable time on 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 a on a, on a, on a, on a quantum computer. Uh, although, like uh, uh, in, in, in in I think uh, in this year or, or in earlier this year, like uh, somebody are already saying that okay, we are able to like uh, uh, using uh, just a couple of uh, CPU cards to simulate unit tensor network algorithms to to do the job uh, of this uh, Google supremacy experiment very efficiently on a classic computer. Uh, but still, uh, there are a few like another uh, follow up uh, experiments and doing quantum supremacy on, on a couple of uh, other uh, experimental uh, platforms. And uh, the the, the problems of all this quantum supremacy experiment is that uh, the application they are using and it's, it's not a real application. It's, it is sort, sort of like a sampling from a random distribution and uh, we, uh, you can hardly find any practical applications from such, uh, from such, uh, such like a random distribution. Uh, uh, random distribution sampling. So the next step as what we believe is to help is to trying to demonstrate uh, practical quantum computing, and this uh, and actually uh, naturally it requires a lot of efforts from all aspects of uh, quantum computer systems, uh, from theory uh, to the device. So uh, from the uh, application side, people uh, are thinking about okay, we uh, what we can do on a 
on a quantum computer is something like uh, simulating a chemical molecule, like do some operations, maybe do quantum machine learning, and also uh, cryptography, uh, also, and of course the uh, famous uh, cryptography application. And on the device side, uh, we uh, already have uh, a bunch of uh, candidates to, to build up our uh, uh, um, qubits, like the superconducting circuits, ion trap, photonics, and uh, quantum dots. Uh, but since it, things in the middle uh, are like uh, much less uh, developed compared with uh, like your application and your device, it is just like uh, like uh, the for for quantum computers it is just like the vacuum tube era or even pre vacuum tube era, just like uh, like back in nineteen forty five when ENIAC was first uh, general purpose electronic uh, digital computer uh, was designed. And my research uh, lies in uh, lies in this like a uh, uh, computer system stacks from programming language to architecture and compilers. So before we uh, get into the uh, details, uh, let me first show some uh, benchmarking data from IBM to to show us why we care about the system work. So here are some like a benchmarking results from IBM on this IBM Montreal uh, 20, 27 qubit device and uh, the metric they are using to evaluate the, the cap capability of this device is called the quantum volume uh, roughly speaking like this is the size of the Hilbert space that this quantum processor can reliably explore and uh, what they uh, find is that okay by only, by using hardware innovations only they are able to reach a quantum volume of 16 uh, but uh, after adding like all the software innovations they have, they are able to reach a quantum volume of two 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 hundred and fifty six. Uh, so the contribution uh, breakdown uh, between software and hardware is roughly like a, a equal. So quantum system research like uh, is not just about like uh, save some time or or increase uh, some throughput. It actually uh, extends the computational uh, capability of quantum, uh, of quantum chips. And both software and hardware are very critical at this moment. So uh, my work uh, starting from the uh, compiler side study, the first study is how to how can we uh, reliably uh, like uh, and efficiently map the logic qubits on uh, in a quantum circuit to the uh, video qubits on a superconducting device. And then uh, looking upward, I, I studied some programming language components like how can we design uh, surgeons to help with uh, quantum program testing and debugging, and also uh, some new intermediate representations to for, for deeper compiler optimizations. And looking downwards, uh, we studied the architectures like how can we design a superconducting uh, architecture efficiently, and putting everything together, we come up with some uh, cross layer co designs for for chemistry simulation. Okay, and uh, 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 fortunately, uh, some of these works are adapt and have been uh, adapted by a bunch of uh, industry uh, frameworks and also re uh, recognized by, uh, by, by, by two awards. And in this uh, talk, uh, we will, and as uh, you see in the uh, title, we will focusing on the software and, and the compiler side. So uh, before we get into details, let's first uh, review uh, the, the background of this uh, a qubit mapping problem, uh, as I believe, like uh, uh, many people also study this problem, like I believe uh, Daniel has a previous lecture uh, telling about their work using uh, solvers to, 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 to solve this problem, and uh, also on superconducting device. And uh, the, 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 the root cause of this problem uh, comes from the like limited connection over uh, the superconducting devices. Uh, like uh, on this IBM's uh, five qubits superconducting uh, chip, there are uh, five uh, like uh, video qubits, like these dark squares here. And uh, the wires uh, that uh, connect these uh, video qubits like, uh, uh, are limited by the like uh, routing and, and, uh, and, and, and wiring and over the uh, 2D uh, planar chip. So uh, a result is that the the connection of this uh, fiddle qubit is limited and it can be can be abstracted in this uh, coupling graph, uh, we, we, which we call it so like a limited uh, uh, with limited qubit connection representation, and uh, uh, go, uh, the the core the, the result of this hardware limitation is that some two the two qubit uh, and uh, is not like executable like on all of these uh, qubit pairs. Uh, on some qubit, on, on some qubit cares like uh, on this like uh, edge between uh, Q0 and Q1, which are connected by an edge in, in this coupling graph, you can do a synodic gate. 
but on then uh, two qubits like Q1 and Q3, you cannot do a, uh, do a zero gate here. And the reality is that, okay, uh, after we have this uh, connection and issue, some of the gates in, the, in, your, in your original problem may not be executable after you, after you map your like a logical qubits to the, to the field qubits here. Let's suppose we have a, like a trivial mapping here. And the first uh, gate is executable over like a Q, Q, Q1 and Q2 because they are connected. The next one is also executable. But, uh, and, but the fourth one and the sixth one and are not executable. Uh, previously, um, what, a, what a compiler really do is to try to uh, insert a, a swap gate here. And after this swap gate, the, the mapping of this uh, Q1 and Q2 are interchanged. So uh, like all the follow-up gates are, all, are, are not uh, executable. And uh, the optimization objective is to like trying to reduce the number of swaps because the swap can be uh, costly and each additional swap will lead to more noise. And uh, here is the uh, summary of this uh, cube mapping problem. We need to determine the initial mapping and swaps uh, inserted here. And we need to satisfy all the TQB dependencies and uh, the compilation quality. It's a uh, good count and also the circuit depths and uh, also like the, the, the final uh, execution fidelity or something like that. And also we hope the compilation time uh, to be short. And uh, uh, our, one of our previous work was uh, actually now the default mapping method in, in, in QuizKit, but this is not our uh, focus in this talk. Uh, in this talk, I'm going to talk about how can we uh, going beyond uh, like uh, insert swaps only and uh, do some like a uh, more large scope program uh, transformations towards uh, like not only this uh, mapping problem, but also some uh, other uh, purposes. So as you can see that a mapping is uh, sort of like optimization based on the hardware information. Like it, it is extracting you know, like the hardware coupling information from the coupling graph uh, over hardware. So, but classical compiler, if you take a look at it, it, it is also like trying to analyzing the, uh, your input program very aggressively and uh, using the algorithm, algorithmic uh, information from your input algorithm. So a natural question is, can we do that uh, in, in, in quantum compilers? And our answer is, uh, of course, yes. Otherwise, and, and I will not be giving this talk today. So uh, this uh, this uh, question leads to our uh, recent work, uh, the polyhedral compiler for, for quantum simulation. But uh, the the problem um, of doing such like a high level uh, algorithmic in uh, optimization and is uh, highly non-trivial. Uh, the, the, the the first problem is that how can we extract algorithm uh, algorithmic information from the program? like giving you like a, a bunch of gates and the measurement and and, and a quantum circuit how can you how, how do you like read and about and understand what the the program is doing and it turns out that this uh, like a program analysis uh, is extremely hard for for for, for quantum computers and in general the key reason is that like most of the operators uh, in, in quantum programming, like their operator, their size is, uh, grows uh, exponentially as the uh, number of qubits increase, uh, increases uh, in the most general case. Uh, like for, for the gate matrices, uh, for the gates we use, we, we, we mostly use, use some like a uh, unitary matrices to, to represent like the, 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 the gate. And for single qubit gate, we, are using like a two by two uh, matrices for two qubit gate. We are using four by four matrices for three qubit cases where we need to have like eight by eight matrices. And uh, for a general like a gate over n qubits, we need to deal uh, we need to deal with uh, uh, matrices uh, a matrix that has a size of two to the power n by two to the, two to the power n, which is very very large and uh, cannot be like efficiently like uh, uh, analyzed and synthesized uh, over. A quantum compiler, which is still a, a software running on our classical computer. So, to tackle this, like, uh, and uh, as the the result of this, like, uh, like the, this, like, uh, operator size scalability issue is that, like, uh, for like today's uh, quantum compilers, so most of the circuit uh, program transformations, like this, uh, like inject. Uh, uh, inject swap gates for, for mapping problem are still like only introducing very small scale uh, uh, circuit transformations like uh, at this uh, two qubit uh, level. And um, uh, my objective is to see, okay, can we like uh, do a circuit transformation over many, many qubits, over many, many gates? 
and uh, it is still like uh, efficient uh, and uh, can can be executed for in a point of time over our classic computer. So so first to overcome this uh, like a, a especially large operator issue, we need to like have a more compact abstract like a representation of our uh, uh, quantum programs to 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 extract such like a high level optimization and opportunities. It may be like too hard uh, to find such a, a form for a uh, for a very general quantum program. But if we are just to target some very specific areas, uh, that is possible. And the the, the area uh, the target area we select uh, in this study is called the uh, quantum simulation. The reason why we select the simulation here is that okay, simulation is a very widely used design principle in quantum algorithm design. Uh, simulating a quantum system by itself, like uh, simulating this uh, like lattice model in condensed matter physics, is by itself uh, uh, in, in important application of quantum computing. And also, like when solving some other like computational optimization problems, like this graph max cost problem. People also like encode this problem into an artificial uh, quantum system, and then, um, like the the encoding method was selected carefully so that the the ground state of this uh sim of this artificial system, uh, is actually the solution to this problem, so that then like uh, solving this uh combinatorial optimization problem is turning to like simulating this artificial system, and. Uh, since like the, 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 this simulation uh, principle is so widely used in, in many quantum algorithms, uh, a subroutine, uh, the, this exponential like uh, e to the uh, power of uh, i h t uh, appear. This uh, like subroutine, or, or we call uh, this quantum simulation kernel, uh, widely exists in many uh, quantum uh, algorithms. And to compile this like uh, kernel into the basic gates, we first uh, we need to first uh, uh, like uh, decompose this Hamiltonian into a weighted sum of uh, poly strings, and then in, in, uh, uh, then implement all the the, uh, the ETP problem of all these poly strings uh, one by one. So this operator will be turning to a very long sequence, and it, it deserves some uh, like more attention to uh, to have a, a deeper optimization. I put the like uh, the formal definition of uh, poly strings here, but uh, you don't need to uh, worry about that. So uh, the, it has many like properties uh, we can use, but in, in this talk we are going to focusing on the uh, mapping problem. So so talking about the mapping problem, uh, the, 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 the the critical thing about the mapping is the tuple gates. So let's take a look at what are the tuple gates in this uh, like et to the power of uh, and poly string. So suppose uh, we have we have this poly string, the, 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 uh, it's a poly string, and we need to like implement it. And I have uh, three different circuit uh, diagrams here, and they look very different. Uh, like uh, the the the, the two gate connections uh, are very different, and also the locations of this single qubit representation are, are different. But what I can tell you is that okay, all uh, these three uh, circuits are equivalent. The only requirement uh, for this uh, synod gates uh, in this in this operator in when implementing this operator is that okay all this synod gate must uh, connect the logic qubits in a tree structure. Okay, for example, in in, in this first uh, like circuit, the synod gate connect Q zero to Q one, Q one to Q two, Q two to Q two to three. The tree structure is uh, looking like this. Uh, this chain structure is a tree. And in the second one, we see that okay, the, the Q0 is con connected to Q3, Q1 to Q3, Q2 to Q3. And this is a sort of like a, a star structure. This is, again, a, a tree. Uh, the, the last one is a little bit more complicated, but uh, the Q0 to Q2, Q1 to 3 to 2, but this structure is, is still a tree. And uh, we uh, and from the property of polystyrene simulations, we, we know that, okay, uh, once the C0 gates are connecting a tree, and uh, the the the, the single gate is located uh, is placed in the root uh, like of this tree. Uh, this circuit will do this uh, will implement uh, this uh, poly string simulation operator. And this actually gives us a, a chance to do very large scope transformations because uh, for like such an operator, 
all these tree implementations, like they look very different, but we, we know that they are, they can, they, they are all equivalent. So let's, uh, then let's take a look at like, how can we use this, uh, like a tree structure property to enable uh, deeper optimizations. So previously for, for a conventional compiler, uh, how do they uh, like do mapping for, for such an operator? Suppose we're still doing this to the power of the DDD and uh, we first need to convert this high level operator into this uh, concrete circuits with some, uh, with like a two qubit gate and two qubit gate. And the less uh, focusing on the first you know, case, you know, on Q0, Q1, 1, 2, 2, 2, 2, 3. And I suppose we have a uh, two by uh, three uh, lattice, like a uh, coupling architecture on the right. And the uh, logic is already mapped uh, like this. And to, to first execute this, uh, like you not on Q0 and Q1, the compiler may say, okay, let's use one swap to move uh, Q1 up uh, by, by like uh, one, one step. And uh, then we see that, okay, the first uh, signal gates on Q0 and Q1, the second signal gate on Q1 and Q2, these two gates are now executable because, okay, they are now uh, in a connected uh, uh, status. And then uh, we need to execute this signal gate on Q2 and Q, uh, Q3. So a compiler may say, okay, we need uh, one swap to move this uh, Q, uh, Q3 uh, to the right by one step and another uh, swap to move Q, uh, Q3 to the right by another step and uh, finally, uh, merge uh, Q2 and Q3 uh, together, we can execute the, the last signal gate. So, so totally we need a uh, three signal gate here. And then now let's take a look at how uh, our polyhedral compiler will leverage, will tackle this mapping problem. And our key is that we need to like leverage this uh, high level information of polystring uh, simulation on operators. Like uh, suppose we're still doing the same operator and the same uh, like hardware coupling and the same initial mapping uh, is, the, uh, is still here. And the polyhedral will not like directly uh, like uh, putting, uh, directly converting a high level operator into basic gates. Uh, instead, we have uh, an, an intermediate reputation and IR to handle this uh, like, a, uh, like a high level operation here. And uh, the compiler will know that, okay, we're doing uh, such a, a polystring simulation like a, a operator. And uh, we recall that, okay, the CNOT gates of, uh, in, inside this operator need to connect all the logic qubits in a tree structure. So what we need to do is to like putting all these logic qubits in, this, uh, in a subtree in, in this hardware architecture. And the polyhedral, what, uh, what polyhedral may do is something like this. Okay, we have a swap Q2, move it down by one step. And after that, we see that the Q3, Q0, 3, 1, 2 is now in a tree structure. Then we, we, we actually find a tree embedding uh, in this uh, hardware uh, coupling graph. And then we can generate this you know, trace of the, uh, like uh, accordingly based on this uh, tree embedding we find. Like we can do a C0 on Q0 to Q3 and a C0 on Q, Q2 to Q1, Q1 to Q3. And the final like a circuit will be something like this. You can see that, okay, it is quite different from the one in the previous slides, uh, which have a very regular structure. But so we know that this one is correct because uh, it follows the rule that, okay, we, we all the sound gates are connected in a tree structure. And uh, now let's uh, do, uh, do uh, like a simple comparison. Uh, like uh, to 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 to, uh, to compile this uh, operator, what a conventional compilation will do is first to convert it to like a assembly style, like gate sequence of this uh, signal gates, and then find the swaps uh, gates to satisfy the uh, constraints, uh, like dependencies of uh, all the signal gates one by one and uh, in, in, uh, sequentially. And totally, we need three swaps here, but. Uh, in our polyhedral compiler, we know that this uh, high-level operator has some many good properties, and we can use this uh, tree structure property. And what we do is like uh, using just the one step to merge all the qubits together in a tree embedding, and we and then we can generate the zero uh, gates accordingly. And the, the overhead is only one step of, of only one swap gates. So totally, like there, uh, polyhedral can achieve a uh, can achieve a very significant uh, swap overhead. Re uh, reduction compared with conventional compilation. And uh, there's uh, many more we can do with uh, polystrings and the simulation programs we can uh, design, like uh, we, we design actually a, 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 a new IR, like a 
with like a formal semantics and syntactics, we can do similar, uh, which supports like similar symmetry preserving error mitigation and parameter sharing, like all this and uh, algorithmic features of uh, quantum simulation programs. And also we can uh, have uh, like uh, more compilation parses to have more case cancellation and the large scope instruction scheduling. And also we can be adapted, uh, we can adapt to different hardware backends uh, using uh, different parses. And if you're interested, please see our papers for details. And uh, to, ev to evaluate our uh, polyhedral, we select um, benchmark, uh, we select benchmarks of different simulation targets, like the molecule uh, system, the Ising system, Heisenberg system, they are like systems for connected matter physics, and also we generate some random uh, Hamiltonian uh, for testing. And also, uh, we also have the UCCSD and the QA graph on that from, for, for near-term uh, variational quantum algorithms. And uh, and our baseline compiler is uh, uh, TCAT, which is an uh, uh, industrial uh, compiler. It also has some specialized support for quantum simulations. And uh, what we can what, what you can see is that okay, polyhedral can achieve very uh, like a great amount uh, like gate count reduction and circuit depth reduction uh, on different backend configurations compared with uh, the TCAT. And the only overhead is that uh, we only introduce like usually less than five percent like compilation uh, time time overhead in the entire uh, in the entire uh, compilation flow. And uh, uh, an, an interesting thing is, uh, I'm very happy to see is that we are actually triggering some changes in uh, critical infrastructure. Uh, like uh, before, uh, for uh, if you want to compile an optimized uh, quantum uh, application in QuizKit, the, the the compiler will first uh, convert the uh, application into the like the very fundamental uh, gate sequence, one qubit and two qubit gates, uh, gates, and then fit into like the gate, gate level compilers with like small scale uh, circuit transformation process. And uh, after uh, that, uh, like uh, now, like the the, the quiz kit is in, in introducing the high level IR infrastructures for an application. Will, it will first looking for opportunities to convert it to high to a mixed style like uh, interpreter representation with both high level IRs and the basic gates. And then we will apply the high level uh, operation passes first, and then compare everything to the gate sequence and uh, uh, fit into the generic uh, gate level compilers. And also the quantum algorithms is much more than just uh, simulations. And uh, we are happy to see that the more high level operations are incoming. Okay, and now we uh, introduced uh, how can we do a high level operations uh, for quantum simulations. And uh, then let's talk about another working our group like uh, uh, introducing high level operations uh, in quantum error correction. So uh, quantum error correction and is believed to be a very important uh, application. Uh, it can, like, uh, the error correction protocol it, itself can be considered an, as a program. And also er error correction is a key to our future, like larger scale for tolerant uh, quantum computers. And uh, the, the reason is that, okay, today's hardware, like it's still very, uh, it's, it's still very noisy, like the error rate of signal gate is still around the, like uh, uh, 1%. And uh, theoretically, you cannot like, uh, like eliminate all the noise uh, effects uh, by, like, uh, uh, by like hardware innovations uh, in, at the device level only. So, so we, we do need like uh, uh, error correction protocols uh, to, to help uh, uh, mitigate and uh, recover from the errors. And uh, the, the quantum error correction code we select uh, in this study is the uh, surface code. There are uh, many other uh, code uh, also, but uh, the, the good thing about surface code is like uh, it has a great uh, error correction capability and uh, re relatively very mild resource requirement. And uh, if we take a look at uh, like the surface code, uh, like it is composed uh, by like uh, physical qubits in uh, a two dimensional uh, lattice structure. And uh, it will encode like all this uh, physical qubits into uh, one logic qubits uh, with less error. And uh, the require and uh, like let's take a look at it, uh, this uh, this example. This is a uh, uh, distance uh, three service code. We totally have twenty five qubits here. And the data qubits, uh, the number of data qubits is thirteen, and the syndrome qubits is, is uh, twelve. And the, the, the quantum data is stored in this uh, data qubits and the syndrome qubits is, is used to, like, um, to, to, to monitor like a, a possible an error happening in the uh, data qubits uh, around. 
and we need to like uh, in, in each like error correction cycle we need to do, do measurement on all this uh, syndrome qubits like basically we need to do 12 measurements but the, the data qubit is, is 13 so the the degree of freedom is still one like it is just uh, act, can act like a, a, a one single logic qubit and uh, to 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 increase uh, like the code distance and the error correction capability of survey code, we simply need to like uh, uh, increase the number of uh, qubits that is uh, uh, that uh, like encodes uh, one logic qubit. And uh, a surface code has relatively like a uh, mild resource requirement, but it may still be satisfied in. Uh, uh, it may still not be able to be satisfied by today's uh, hardware. Like a surface code needs uh, requires a 2D physical qubit coupling. Uh, of course, okay, Google Google architecture uh, can do this, but all the other like superconducting architecture, like Rigetti's architecture and IBM architecture, they are, they are not able to accommodate this uh, to uh, 2D lattice uh, directly uh, due to some like uh, technology problems. Like an IBM is using the uh, fixed frequency uh, transmons and uh, a very dense coupling like this to the lattice will cause some uh, friction uh, frequency collision problems and cause hardware defects. So the the current state is that is, is sometimes we can only have like a sparse uh, connections uh, in our superconducting uh, like uh, architecture. And how, how can we have like a QD, uh, kernel error current code protocols on these different like, architectures? The recent study, like by IBM, the, uh, what they are doing is that okay, they mainly designed the new kernel error current codes uh, tailored to this uh, bus uh, architectures. Like uh, for they they recently have a paper like a uh, study of how can we do like a uh, error correction on uh, like a low degree uh, coupling graph. Uh, but what we hope to do is to design a compiler that can automatically like solve this mismatch between the surface code and, and the underlying sparse architecture. And uh, the the and with the three things uh, we are uh, we we propose is first we need to have a good abstraction just like the poly strings in, in in the polyhedral compiler. This time we are using a new high level operator uh, called the uh, the stabilizer. And after we encode this, uh, the, the, pro, the quantum error current code with, with st st stabilizers uh, operators, we are able to like leverage the knowledge about the beneficial and the log uh, legal transformations of the of the surface code, uh, like a uh, syndrome measurement uh, uh, circuits, and then we can design corresponding algorithm and search schemes to try to search for a more efficient implementation of uh, of uh, surface code over these sparse architectures. So. Uh, these are the three uh, different uh, stages of this uh, compiler. We first uh, do the data qubits uh, allocation and then find the syndrome qubits and then uh, schedule the, the, the measurement sequence and the, the face our paper for, for details. And I, I, want, uh, I don't have time for the details, but I want to highlight the result is that, okay, uh, uh, the, 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 the metric we are using to evaluate a quantum error code is also, is, of course, it's most of the time the error threshold. Uh, which means, okay, once we have a device that is uh, has a like gate uh, a gate arrow below this arrow threshold, we are able to like uh, increase. We are able to in improve the uh, performance of this quantum error current code by just uh, uh, adding like more resources and uh, increase the code distance. And compared with an uh, IBM, we find that okay, in their like a heavy uh, square. Uh, architecture, we are able to like uh, automatically search for uh, a search scheme, a uh, uh, quantum error correction scheme that is has the same error threshold with with uh, with IBM, and on this uh, heavy hexagon architecture, we are able to search for a quantum error correction scheme that have even a a better, a higher uh, error threshold uh, compared with the manually designed uh, quantum error correction code scheme um, uh, designed by the experts uh, from uh, from IBM. You can see our paper for, uh, for, from our paper. The the the, uh, the key operation of this study is that like the the manually designed QZ code uh, can be like uh, can may not be optimal because we are uh, having like uh, like the design code need to we need to consider a lot of things the the, the code the performance how do we place the code the underlying sparse architecture a lot of things we need to consider and but after we putting everything uh, like encode all these constraints and putting everything in our compiler we are able like we can use our like very powerful classic computers to automatically help us search for uh, a quantum error correction scheme and. Uh, 
the key is that okay, search when 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 like searching in a very large uh, design space, the compilers, uh, the automatic compilers can uh, most um, most of the time just like our classic compilers uh, do better, uh, like compared with a uh, human being. So this is uh, about how can we use um, hello um, operators in quantum American code, and in the in the, in the last work uh, we were going to go over in, in this uh, talk where I'm going to talk about how can we use hello operators in in quantum program testing, and this is about our work project and based runtime research for for quantum program uh, testing and debugging. So. Uh, quantum program is very like error prone for programmers uh, living like like us living in the classical world. We are used to classical things, and uh, like uh, quantum is very counterintuitive for us. So like uh, uh, consider this diagram. This is the quantum calculation program. Like everybody uh, like will know this when they study uh, quantum computing. This is the quantum version of the hello world. Uh, but what we can observe from like IBM's uh, GitHub repo is that they report okay. Uh, even the their like uh, the, the the example program in uh, in the Quizlet uh, open QRM or some uh, benchmark suite, someone says that okay your your teleportation program has an error. Like even for this very simple uh, program with just three qubits and uh, maybe uh, six gates, uh, it's uh, people like uh, even like the experts from IBM can make mistakes when composing such a simple uh, program. So this triggers us to design like uh, some powerful to, to to think about like what about, how can we do efficient quantum program testing and debugging. So to test uh, a quantum uh, program, like basically you are trying to test uh, a, a quantum state, and uh, testing a quantum state uh, like uh, it is uh, like a sort of a well studied problem in, in quantum information science, and there are already some uh, existing uh, approaches. Uh, like this, uh, like the the standard approach is, is called the quantum state uh, tomography. And the, the quantum state tomography is a protocol that can fully characterize like uh, all the details of uh, as far as we can know and of all the details of a quantum state. And the problem of this uh, quantum uh, state tomography, I'm not going to talk about details, but it is a uh, very expensive, uh, roughly speaking. Like you can consider, like a quantum state is a mathematical object in a very high dimensional uh, space as the number of qubits uh, increases. And quantum st st state tomography will observe this like uh, uh, objective in a high dimensional state in many different like uh, dimensions. Like uh, we look at this, we check it in one dimension, in the third in the ne next dimension, in the third dimension, in, the, in all dimensions, and. Uh, Due to the like the destructive measurement inside this measurement uh, inside this oblation checking processes, uh, to execute the quantum state tomography, we need to repeat the state perturbation uh, like many many times and do the measurement, uh, which is uh, very very expensive. Experimentally, uh, what I remember like uh, uh, people can do maybe a three qubit quantum state tomography or maybe a four qubit for today, but uh, uh, basically you cannot uh, you cannot do a very large scale quantum state tomography very efficiently. And uh, another approach is uh, to design some like a more lightweight um, assertions that can be uh, checked, uh, hopefully can be checked um, at runtime. And the problem of uh, previous like uh, assertions before our work is that uh, first they uh, mostly de describe the property of like uh, of a quantum state using classical languages. Like they say, okay, is a state in a like cluster based string, classical uh, based string state, or in a superposition, or in an entanglement state. Uh, the problem of this uh, of this assertion is that their expressive power is poor because, like, uh, the quantum state can be very very complex, and but using classical languages, you can only de describe very li very limited uh, like state properties, and also uh, they still require some direct measurement, uh, which um, which we, which still like will destroy the, the the tested state and make all follow up executions meaningless. So our objective uh, in this study is to develop uh, like a lightweight assertions um, with uh, two of these uh, specific objectives. The first of uh, of course uh, we hope to have like strong expressive power. We hope to be able to specify complex quantum state properties. And also, we hope that this uh, our session can be checked efficiently and at runtime. 
And the result is that we select the projection operators uh, for both of these um, objectives. So what is projection? A projection like in a linear, uh, like a Hilbert space is that it will like a map a state in a Hilbert space to a specific, uh, to, uh, to an associated uh, like a linear subspace uh, uh, with this uh, projection operator. Like suppose we have this uh, state uh, Psi and after we apply this projection P, the result is the, the, the Psi P, like uh, the, its component inside this uh, subspace. And uh, we can like uh, specify like uh, whether a state is uh, correct or not correct uh, by like uh, whether the state is in this uh, like a uh, subspace of this projection or not in the subspace or, uh, of this uh, projection. And then we can use uh, like the subspaces as a predicate uh, to quantify our uh, quantum state. And the good thing about uh, projection is that uh, uh, you can like uh, select uh, like uh, subspaces of very di of uh, different like uh, size of dimensions uh, from uh, one to to the power of n. And uh, for example, we can have uh, like a one dimensional uh, projection like this zero zero, and this is simply very uh, like a similar to a classical bit string specification. Like we only uh, uh, allow like a, a one dimensional subspace of this zero zero. And, but also we can have a projection of dimension two, like this uh, zero, zero plus one, one, like basically everything like uh, th that is uh, like uh, in this subspace spanned by uh, zero, zero and one, one is allowed. So we, we are actually allowing a two dimensional subspace here. This greatly uh, increases the expressive power of like compared with just uh, like those one, uh, one, one dimensional specifications. And the uh, a downside of this uh, projection is that uh, the sum state uh, becomes indistingu uh, indistinguishable in the sense of projection. Uh, like when both states are in the subspace of this uh, projection, like this uh, Psi P and this uh, Psi P prime, uh, they are different, but uh, they cannot be distinguished uh, under our language of uh, projection. But this is uh, kind of kind of understandable because we are trying to avoid uh, the, that uh, that very the expensive uh, uh, quantum state, state, state tomography. And later we can see that uh, uh, this projection, uh, whether in a, uh, in a subspace can be efficiently checked. So uh, the reason like uh, why a projection can be efficiently checked is that uh, like uh, conceptually it is turning a state calculation problem into a state determination problem. Uh, using the language of uh, of programming, uh, using the terminologies from programming languages, it is can be considered as a sound approximation. So, and compared with like uh, knowing all the details of a state, like uh, knowing like whether like this uh, this state is in or out of the subspace is much e uh, is much uh, easier to to check. And also another great thing is of projection projective uh, projection is that the projective measurement spotted in today's uh, quantum computers. Uh, may be able to preserve the measured state, uh, the, the measured state when the state is already in the subspace of this uh, projection. Uh, that is okay. If our state, input state, is, is this uh, psi p, we apply this projection. This uh, projection, uh, like, uh, will not affect uh, this uh, state. And uh, like, uh, without uh, like uh, per uh, perturbing uh, the, the state, uh, we may be able to allow follow up and executions. So. Uh, uh, based on this uh, conceptual designs, uh, we, uh, we have this new language uh, primitive assert uh, q bar p, and uh, the p is a projection, and the q bar is a set of qubits we hope to like check. And to execute this, uh, uh, this assertion, we design a, a two, two output uh, measurement. The true output uh, is associated with the projection p, and the false output is uh, associated with the also, also component uh, of this projection. And if, if the result is true, we just continue. If the result is false, we just abort and report there are some errors here. And uh, like after like talking about all these conceptual designs, let's consider some practical implementation issues of this uh, projection. Uh, the problem is that this constructed measurement may not be uh, always executable on uh, like a physical computer. And we consider uh, uh, key, uh, uh, two key constraints here. The first is a limited measurement basis. 
the problem is that like most uh, physical kind of computer implementations, uh, they only support the uh, like a projective measurement along the combinational basis over this uh, zero and, uh, uh, and and one basis. Like we if we have a projection with measurement like this, uh, measurement two zero and measurement force uh, one, it is uh, executable. But if we like uh, consider an, an, an another like even like sing single uh, qubit measurement uh, like this, uh, our two output with a plus state and a minus state. Uh, this state is uh, like trying to do state discrimination over this uh, like a red and uh, axis. This one is not directly executable, and even like this plus minus state is just a very simple like linear transformation of this of the zero and one uh, state. And the the second problem is uh, dimension mismatch. Uh, that like uh, consider we have uh, like a uh, we're we're doing we're checking over like an n qubits and uh, its its state space is uh, two to the power n dimensional Hilbert space, and uh, a projection like uh, after we measure like one qubit, uh, the state uh, will collapse the qubit the, the state over this qubit will collapse to one and the, the overall state space will uh, the, the the dimension the size will be reduced by half. And we will have a two to the power uh, a minus, a minus one dimensional uh, space uh, like this. Uh, we put all possible ranks uh, here, and uh, we measure another qubit. It moves uh, down again. We move uh, another qubit. Like uh, we move one, 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 uh, uh, one more qubit. And after we measure all the like uh, n, n qubits, like uh, we are going to reach uh, like a, a one dimensional subspace, which basically like specify the states of a classical bit stream. Uh, the physical constraints is that, uh, like uh, in the experiment, we can only measure an integer number of qubits. Uh, so the result is that we can only support the projections of rank two to the power n minus one, um, um, like a minus two to two to the power zero. Basically, all the uh, green uh, blocks uh, in these possible ranks. But it is also possible that we can have a projection of like a, a, a of a subspace of size like uh, not a two to the power integer like this uh, projection has a, a subspace of dimension uh, three zero 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 plus zero one uh, plus uh, one one and it, it is here uh, in the in this uh, red block and uh, this such a, a projection cannot be directly uh, like executed. Okay. So to, 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 to deal with this uh, physical constraints, we uh, propose a, a, a certain compilation flow here. So uh, it has uh, like a two key uh, steps. We first, uh, we first control the dimension using two techniques. Uh, the first one is called the Ancilla qubits. By introducing like an Ancilla qubit in the system, we are able to augment the, the system by like, a, uh, by like a 100%. Then uh, uh, this uh, uh, this operation will move the rank of the uh, of the projection relatively lower, and then also we can use the intersection of some uh, larger projections to, to 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 implement a small projection because that okay the 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 intersection of multiple larger linear subspaces is still a linear subspace. And using this uh, technique, we can move the relative uh, position of this projection up. So by combining this and the qubit and in an in, in intersection of larger projections, we can move the rank of the move the rank of the projections up and down, and finally putting everything to the to a place where with a two to the power of an integer. And then um, after we resolve the dimension issue, uh, we are we, uh, we we are going to like a, uh, solve the measurement basis issue. And what do we uh, we can always introduce some unitary transformations like this to 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 rotate the measurement basis back to the combinational basis zero and one. We can do the measurement, and uh, if the measurement outcome is true, and we know that uh, what the the unit uh, and this step will not uh, change the state, and also we already know that the what what uh, the original unitary transformation we we are introducing, and we can always rotate things back. And the uh, by this compilation for now, we are able to make all the projection uh, based decisions physically and executable. And in, in our paper, you will be able to find um, many more details with statistical efficiency proofs and also uh, many more examples. And uh, uh, another thing I want to uh, highlight is that by insert projection based uh, assertions in the middle, we can uh, reduce uh, the simulation. We can filter out some hardware errors and increase the fidelity, the, the performance of the computers. And uh, like in, in this uh, experiment uh, con conducted by uh, TQC, which is now uh, uh, Quentinan. 
And what they observe is that they place a projection based on uh, like a, a assertion in the middle of their molecular simulation project an experiment on an hour trap device, and they can find they find that that they are able to reduce the simulation error by fifty by fifty percent. And uh, uh, let's uh, uh, it's, uh, I think uh, it's the end of this uh, talk. Let's uh, let me summarize some uh, take home messages here. So first, uh, high-level information can be very, uh, uh, very useful, but it's, it is not uh, far from fully utilized in today's quantum software. And uh, but the difficulty of using high-level information is that re reconstructing the high-level semantics from a quantum assembly style like a code and like the gate sequences is very hard. So it, it is possible to in, in enhance your software with building high-level operators, and you can design pre corresponding compilation and circuit trans uh, program transformations based on these um, high-level uh, languages. And uh, that is the uh, like most high-level principles we are using in in, the, in all these studies. Okay, so I will going to uh, stop this uh, at these pages with an overview, and uh, I'm going to take a take uh, take some questions here. Thank you.